LAN extension and virtualization using layer 3 protocols. It turns out there is a lot of overlap between virtualization and cloud computing. So by the time we finish all this virtualization, we have probably finished cloud computing as well. We'll have, um, so for clouds, we need virtualization and LAN extension is one of them. So let's see what is LAN extension. So basically we'll talk about what is LAN extension and then today we'll talk about two protocols, Trill and Lisp. And then next time we'll talk about the rest of them, which is NBO3, VXLAN, NVGRE, STP, etc., etc. So one of the first solutions for LAN extension was called Trill, Transparent Interconnection of Lots of Links. Now interestingly enough, this solution was done by Radia Perlman. C is the inventor of a spanning tree. Right? And C is the killer of a spanning tree too, because this basically says that forget the spanning tree now. And so, so basically allows a large campus network to be a single extended LAN. So her idea was not so much about the data center. Her idea was for a large campus. So a campus like our university. It is several miles wide and generally we will have lots of ethernets here. We will have one in computer science department, one in electrical engineering and maybe multiple in computer science department and so on and so forth. Very little, little tiny ethernets. And um, because of that, it makes mobility difficult. Every time you go from one ether to the next ethernet, you lose your connection and then you have to start everything again all over. In fact, when I come from office to here, you know, we lose the connection, right? So all the FTP or whatever was going on before has to be disconnected and reconnected again. So she said that there are lands are good for something and their IP is good for something. Why don't we take the best of both worlds? Okay. And so she says LAN is good for mobility. But then they have lots of other problems. First of all, they have very inefficient path using a spanning tree. Now remember this work is started before shortest path bridging. So this is started um, four or five years ago. So at that time spanning tree was the main thing and then so the issue is that with a spanning tree, if you want to cross a large campus, you are going to be totally off the optimal path. Inefficient link utilization since many links are disabled. We know this problem with the spanning tree also. Inefficient link utilization since multipath is not allowed. And then unstable. The small changes in the network, large changes in the spanning tree. When some, something breaks, we lose a lot of time and we lose um, and the whole network becomes different. On the other hand, IP subnets are good for all of these. IP subnets are not good for mobility because IP addresses change as the nodes moves and break the transport connections, but IP is efficient, optimal and stable. So all of these are not a problem with IP. And so therefore, she said we should take the best of both worlds and we should use the MAC addresses, which is what allows mobility, and but use IP routing. And so she invented a word called routing bridges. R bridges. Routing bridges, what they do is, these are R bridges right here, what they do is they take the packet and then they route it to the destination. So a normal bridge will take the packet, put it on the other side, this will take the packet, put it on the other side, it will go to the route somewhere and then come back down the route and then go to the destination. But instead of doing that, our bridges will take the shortest path to the destination, right? Because they are going to use IP routing, like OSPF or something. So R bridges encapsulate the L2 frames and route them to destination R bridges, which decapsulate and forward. So Ethernet frame is encapsulated into some packet and appears over here finally, and then it is decapsulated. So the real nodes see only Ethernet packet. Header contains a half limit avoid looping and obviously like just like in any IP packet, there is a time to lift field, which is the number of hops. R bridges run IS to IS to compute pairwise optimal path. So how do you find the path? By using IS to IS. 
okay anyway so what happens is that um, this uh, bridge will learn the addresses just like the source source addresses it will learn and then it will pass it on to the other bridges and saying that i know that these nodes are to the left of me so i am the destination for them and so on and so forth so whenever somebody sees a packet going to h1 it will send it to rb1 okay so these rb4 rb2 and rb3 will not learn h1 by source part they will learn it by messages coming from rb1 so rb2 will also say that i i i have learned that the h1 is on the left of me so i am also a path yes there are multiple paths so when somebody wants to go from h2 well from h2 i think there is this is the shortest path from um, let's say from here you have two halves right and there are two halves from this way too so there are two paths from this segment so everybody advertises whatever they learn they tell their other people and and the other people basically use the shortest path methodology like osp or something whatever it is and then find out shortest path for every host so r bridges learn mac addresses by source learning and by exchanging their tables with other r bridges and each vlan on the link has one and only one designated r bridge using is to is selection protocol so now this this answer the question that was before sorry i should have changed read that the last line last line says that when you have two bridges one of them becomes the designated bridge and the other, so basically for each vlan there is one designated bridge so there are two bridges here for some vlans this might be designated for other vlans this might be designated okay and that's how the traffic will be distributed or the load will be distributed between the two bridges so this paper was published in 2004 which is 9 years ago and the trill rfcs are just coming out so that's how long it takes for things to get standardized believe it or not right so routing here means that um, see first of all there, there are several parts of making the routing table first one is to find out who is where which is done by is to is right once you have that information then you have to run some dijkstra or some algorithm to find the shortest path to the destination so so that is run here okay i mean you could call that there this is what is done in ospf2 in ospf you run the dijkstra and you find out what is shortest path however we will not call it ospf here because ospf has more than just dijkstra so you run some algorithm to find the shortest path once you have that then then you basically just look at that table so it's always it's not like ip in ip you have the largest prefix match here you have exact match because you have 48 bit destination address you look that up and you find that okay this is on this place send it there okay so this one is actually not very clear i will tell you why because we use is to is which is can be called layer 3 but we are not using ip as such now see thing this next slide is coming up here so the trill this is the trill packet this is the original packet you put this header and then you put another ethernet packet here there are two headers so the trill header has the source and the destination number of hops to live and um the the length of these options here multiple destination this is multi cast or single cast uni cast reserved and version number so basically there is no ip here okay so you take this put the trill header and then put the outer header which is again ethernet header outer ethernet header okay and so this will find its way from source to the destination using these now using these r bridge addresses here you think so this rb1 when it finds a packet it will encapsulate it and say that it has to go to rb3 all right now the path to rb3 is by rb4 so it will just give it to rb4 but really it is going to rb3 
the destination field is arbitrary. Yes. So, uh, but does it know also the addresses of all the? Yeah, right, right. They all know each other. Yeah. They so they all know each other. In fact, um, this is what is happening here. The outer header has the address of RB4. So it will go from RB1 to RB4 and then it will go from RB4 to RB3. Now they will know that they reached the destination. Now they will take it off and give the original packet back here. So, so basically on this Ethernet, it will travel from RB1 to RB4 and then RB4 to RB3. So they know the path, they know the intermediate halves, they know the destination address. So even though this is under layer, did I say layer 3 before, but basically they are, all layer 3 part is here that they are using IS to IS. Okay? IS to IS is considered as a layer 3 protocol in OSI terminology, although we remember we use that in SPV, that's how I was thinking where we use the IS to IS. So this trail while it was going on IETF, IEEE already took it and is adopted it and made it a standard, I mean not trail part, the shortest path routing. That's where we were talking about IS to IS. Remember we talked about very similar idea there in shortest path routing that the bridges exchange addresses using IS to IS. That's what I was trying to say that we, looks like we had talked about it. So that was SPB, shortest path bridging. That's a standard. Trail is just coming out, the trail arches are just coming out. So probably IETF is much slower than IEEE. So let's see, did we miss anything? For outer levels, outer headers both PPP and Ethernet headers are allowed. PPP is the point to point protocol and that is um, basically when you have point to point link, generally telephone links, we use PPP and Ethernet is allowed and uh, PPP for long haul, if you are going to connect to long haul to telephone line and use PPP. Outer header can have a VLAN ID corresponding to the VLAN used for the trail. So the outer header, if it is Ethernet header, then Ethernet header could have a MAC address and the VLAN address, VLAN ID, and that would correspond to the trail VLAN ID. So this will say this is for use of the trail routers only, and nobody else can see that traffic. And then priority bits in the outer headers are copied from the inner VLAN. So now in the outer header, there must be a priority field which says this is a high priority packet that is taken from here. So if this is original packet is high priority, then the outer packet is high, high priority. If it is lower priority, the outer packet is lower priority. All right, so trill features. First of all, it is transparent. No changes to capabilities. So the bridges, the nodes, everybody, and not the bridges. The nodes work as if there was they were connected to normal ethernet and they go basically, and, and the bump traffic is supported basically and auto learning is supported. Zero configuration. There is nothing you have to tell the art bridges, you just connect them and, and and then turn the power on. They will discover who are they connected to and what are the addresses, etc. Everything is done manually, uh, sorry, automatically. And host can be multi-homed. So now here is another interesting part is that you could have a host which is connected here as well as here. Everybody knows what is multi-homed means? Multi-home means you could have two Ethernet cards in a host and they could be connected to two different networks. Multi-home. Multi-home means you could have, generally we are single home, we have only one Ethernet card, right? But if you take two Ethernet card, if you take one external one, one internal one, then you are multi-home. You could take three or four. So you remember in the, in the data center, each server has how many homes? Two. So they are all multi-home. Right, because they, they go to two different switches, which go to two different this and that, right? So that is what multi-homing means. Dual home, we call it dual home, but multi-homing could be triple home, quadruple home. So that is multi-homing. VLANs are supported, optimized route is there, no loops, blah, blah, and then and the legacy bridges with spanning tree in the same extended land. This is the interesting part is that you don't have to change all the bridges to our bridges on day one. You could have some old bridges which don't know anything about the R bridges and some new bridges which are R bridges. All right, how did that work? Let me just, let us show you. So just assume that some of these are not R bridges. 
what will happen is, let's say this RB4 is not an R bridge. Then, this bridge will advertise all of these hosts and these hosts and this will advertise same thing like that. And then when something needs to be going from here to H2, it will send it here to RB3. This bridge will, will forward it normally because this has a normal Ethernet header going to RB3. Remember the outer header is a normal Ethernet header. So this legacy bridge, the old bridge, will not know that this is a trill and I don't know trill what trill is because trill packets look like Ethernet packet to begin with. Right? So this old bridge will forward it to RB3 and then RB3 will open it up and send it out. So that's the beauty of it is that it's totally compatible, totally transparent. The old bridges and they could be using a spanning tree and everything else. Yeah, see that's the, this, the thing is trill header, they, they will look at the outer header only. Yeah, VLAN ID, the priority and uh, all the MAC addresses are all here in the outer header. Alright, if there are no more questions, then we come to the end of trill. And the trill summary is that it allows a large campus to be a single extended LAN, which large campus now could be a multiple data centers. And packets are encapsulated and routing using IS to IS routing. Now, we have to define what is IS star routing. Basically, IS star IS is used for exchange of the addresses and then they use protocol or some algorithm to find the shortest path. And so, this is in some sense similar to shortest path bridging. I think um, IEEE just uh, probably got the idea from Trill and before IETF could finish it, they already got it in.